in the series on crew ai we have been looking into introduction to crew in the first video we saw about crew ai and the agents and tasks in the second video we moved on to flow and we saw the ways to control seamless interaction between different agents in a crew and we moved on to the knowledge in part three and we saw about different knowledge sources such as string sources docking sources etc and we also saw about knowledge management in this video let's move on to crew ai tools and in the next video we'll probably wrap everything up with a small demo project so what are we going to look into under tools today so we're going to look into what is a tool in crew ai and we are going to look into what are the different characteristics of tools in crew ai then we'll move on to simple code examples as to how we can create a tool in crew ai and we will move on to creating custom tools on top of the existing tools that come with crew ai and we will look into two ways in which we can create custom tools which is subclassing and decorators. And lastly, we will look into structured tools, which will help us invoke any external APIs in order to get real-time data from external sources, which is quite handy to interface with different systems. So without further ado, let's get started with tools. Tools are what empower agents in Crew AI with capabilities ranging from web search and data analysis. So let's look into what is a tool. So a tool, in Crew AI is a skill or a function that the agent can use to perform various actions and it includes several tools in the Crew AI toolkit and also we can use the Langchain tools which come in part of the Langchain framework. So if you look into Crew AI tools we can see that they've created a separate repository and inside the repository if we go under Crew AI tools and under tools we can see quite a few tools which are readily available. For example, we can search CSV, we can search directory, we can also read um, from directory and we can do file read, we can also read JSON and there's plenty of tools that come along with it. So let's see what are the key characteristics of tools in Crew AI. First one is the utility and they are saying that the tools are mainly being crafted for web search, data analysis, content generation and agent collaboration. And the next one is integration. Tools seem to be seamlessly integrating with the agents in order to enable them to be much more capable. And the next one is customizability. And they are saying that, you know, the tools are quite flexible to develop custom tools as we will see later on in the video, how we can go about developing custom tools and use existing ones as well, catering for specific needs of the agents. And next comes the error handling. The tools seem to incorporate very robust error handling, thereby ensuring very smooth operation. Finally, it also seems to come with a caching mechanism. We will look at code example as to how we can cache some of the data in order to be used efficiently by the tools so with those characteristics let's look into some a simple code example to see how we can use tools to get started with crew ai tools we need to install crew ai tools and not just crew ai we do so by command pip install crew ai tools so once we install that we are ready to use the tools and if we look at this example this is a simple example of how we can go about using crew ai tools despite importing agents tasks and the crew for running the crew we now each need to import whatever the tool we want from crew ai underscore tools for example if you want to use directory read tool then we need to import the directory read tool from crew ai tools once we have imported that we can go ahead uh, creating instances of those tools for example for the directory read tool we need to provide the directory from which we are actually will be reading data and then we have to create an instance of it let's say docs tool similarly for any other tool like file read tool or server dev tool or website search we just have to create an instance of it and whenever we create agents we just have to provide the tools in the list of tools parameter for example we are creating a researcher agent with the role market research analyst and the goal is to provide up-to-date market analysis of ai industry and we're also providing the backstory and on top of that we're saying that use the search tool and the web rack tool in order to extract the needed information for your work and then we create a researcher agent similarly if we want to write an agent then we provide the docs tool and the file tool and then we create the role which is content writer and we create an instance of the agent which is the writer 
So once we have done that, obviously we need to define the task, which each of the uh, the researcher researcher will do the research task, the writer will do the write task. And once you have defined that, then we need to create the crew. When we create the crew, we again pass the agent and the task. But remember to set the planning as true. This is what enables the planning feature and this is needed for the crew to run along with the tools and as usual we'll be kicking off the crew with crew.kickoff let's quickly look at the available tools with crew ai before we actually look into code for creating custom tools so two things are common with crew ai tools one is that error handling all of the tools come with very efficient error handling or very elegant error handling so the agents will gracefully manage exceptions and continue with their task and the next one is the caching mechanism which is available across the board so it enables the agents to efficiently use previously obtained results on top of that we can also have finer control over the caching mechanism using the cache function so when we look into caching we will see how we can use the cache function in order to have fine grain control over the variables that will actually be caching as we saw when we looked into the crew ai tools repository these are all the tools that are available in the repository they've also listed in the documents like these are the different tools that are available there are even tools to integrate with dali which will enable us to generate images using the dali api and the serper tool which will allow us to specific functionalities and there's a general purpose rack tool capable of handling various external data sources and we can even look into youtube channel search and we can even do search within a youtube video so these are the niche tools that are available now let's move on to how we can create our own tools like I said before, there are two ways we can do it. So one is by subclassing and we need to subclass from a base tool. And the next one is using the tool decorator. So let's look into how we can do with the subclassing. For subclassing, we need to import the base tool from crew AI tools. So once we import that, we need to create a class that inherits from the base tool. In this case, it's my custom tool. And once we create this class, we need to implement the underscore run function and within the function we need to give the logic for the tool and obviously we need to return what was the result of the tool on top of that if you ever want to pass any data into the tool which we will do in most cases we'll have to use the pydantic base model again so we import the base model we create a class or schema from the base model and we will pass that as input to the class or the tool that we are creating as the arc schema so it's as simple as this and the next way we can create a tool is by using the tool decorator so with the tool decorator all that we have to do is uh, from crew ai tools obviously import tool but we can just straight away jump into writing any function and inside the function we obviously have need to have the function logic here and we need to return the result of the custom tool and the way to convert this function into tool is simply by decorating with the add tool and giving the name of the tool and the tool is ready to be used by any agent that we create next comes the structured tools the structure tools are the ones that can be used when you actually want to sort of get access to some external APIs. So it supports custom schemas and dynamic logic for seamless integrated integration to complex functionalities. But in most cases, we can wrap a function that interacts with the external API or systems. So let's see how we can go about that. So to use a structure tool, we need to import crew structure tool from crew tool. We then have to define the API call, which we can inherit from the Pydantic base model, the schema of the API call. Let's say the parameters that we want to pass to the API is, uh, let's say an employee details. We need to pass the employee name and the data path to get all of the details of an employee so those will be the parameters and the endpoint will be the endpoint where we'll actually get the data from we then need to write a wrapper function that actually does the invocation of the api by passing the endpoint and the parameter which is the employee name and the data path in this example once we write this tool wrapper all that we have to do is we need to invoke crew structure tool dot from function and we need to pass this tool wrapper as the parameter for func and for the arc schema parameter we need to pass the api call input which is nothing but the structure of the api call 
that we defined using the pydanting base model. So that's all that we need basically. Once we write this function, which does the invocation of the API, we then need to invoke the structured tool dot run function and pass the needed parameters. By doing this, we get the result of invocation and, and we get the data from the API endpoint. So one of the last things that we need to learn before we wrap up the tools is the custom caching mechanism. We said the caching mechanism cuts across all the tools. It is available across the board, whatever the tool that we choose to use. But how do we go about customizing the caching mechanism? It says that tools can optionally implement a cache function to fine tune the caching behavior. So we can choose which are the variables or we can choose specific conditions offering a granular control over the caching logic. So we can specify the condition under which something will be cached. For example, let's say this is a multiplication tool that we have created, which returns the multiplication of the two numbers that we input. In order to define a condition under which the multiplication tool has to cache its results, we have to write a small function that gives the condition. In this case, the condition is that if the result is divisible by 2, then we need to cache. For example, if the input is 2 by 2, then this tool will return 4 which is divisible by two, and so the result will be cached. But if it's a three by three, then it will be nine, and the result won't be divisible by two, so it won't be cached. And how do we provide this condition to the multiplication tool? All that we have to do is multiplication tool dot cache function is equal to cache func, which we defined, and it's the condition that we need to use. And we can just go about using the tool similar to how we will use any other tool by saying tools equal to and we pass the list of tools. In this case, it's the multiplication tool. So that pretty much uh, wraps up the video on the tools. I think we have covered pretty much all the features that are available with the tools. So in the next video, let's do an end-to-end -end project. Let's look at all the concepts that we have learned so far. Let's use crews, obviously. Let's use flows and let's use knowledge. And obviously we'll be using LLMs. And then we'll also be using them, some tools in order to do the final project. So I'm really excited about it. So I will see you in that video. Until then, I'm signing off. Take care.